Hello, it's traders, and we are testing, testing, one, two, three. This is a quick run through. I want to see if I can make this thing fit in a video without making it too long. Uh, a couple of days ago, weeks ago, I made a video. I don't know if you guys watched it. It was a thinkorswim, and it was about how to create uh, filters, and uh, that was over here. Uh, in the scan tab, right? Okay, so we we pretty much covered how to filter, uh, how to get, for example, scanning in the S and P 500, uh, and excluding all of the penny stocks, we could create a filter. Uh, in this case, using a pattern, although normally you would create it using uh, specific parameters for a stock or an option or a fundamental or study. Uh, in this case, the one that's added is one for a pattern, so it would find uh, stocks that had a double top, for example, within the last 10 days uh, in the 15-minute uh, time interval. So if you ran this scan, it would go ahead and look and find, let's say, IBM uh, or the NASDAQ itself. So according to this, you know, you got IBM with a double top double top. Now, that doesn't mean that you always find what it sees, but let's see if uh, we can do this real quick. Although this is, video is not on scans. Alright, so here is, this is 30 minutes, so let's go to the last 10 days, 15 minute. I thought there was a, well, that should be, uh, actually should work. Let's see if we can find it exactly. We're going to customize this and make it 10 day, 15 minute. Let's see here. Okay, on the 15 minute, add that, apply it. That's the one we want. Uh, okay, I guess it doesn't apply it automatically. There it is. Okay, so according to this uh, scan, IBM has a double top somewhere. So it's probably looking at this one here. You know, bounce off the of resistance, bounce again. That's the double top, so it would be thinking that this thing is going to start heading back down. All right, so we're not going to uh, review uh, review any of that stuff, but I will uh, soon cover in a new video how to create um, automatic scans. So you can actually save this and come back to this. You can kind of like a watch list, right? So if you come over here to the hamburger icon, you can save this as a watch list. Okay, and you can call this, let's say, a double top watch list, right? You know what? Let's make this shorter just because I know that later on things don't fit. Okay, so there's the watch list. And if you come over here, then you can look for that watch list right in personal. There it is. Okay, now this is a watch list. So what this means is that this will remain a uh, uh, a list with these two items in it. Okay, and you can go ahead and, and run this and actually set an alert for it if you want to, right? Um, and and we'll run over that in another video. Basically, you just come over here and you say, okay, you know, uh, as a symbol is added. Uh, in to top watch list, we're going to call it double top alert, right? Then you can notify, you know, with a uh, sound like a bell, uh, make it something different because everything else is a bell. We'll do chimes, all right? Actually, that's a very common sound as well. Let's do a ring. Yeah, that's definitely not common, okay? And uh, I can also have it send push notifications to my mobile device, um, okay? And um, don't, not sure, okay, so yeah, you can send me a message every time, or every time or on an hourly basis if that change happens and from a certain date to a certain other date, and that's it. And then you create this, and what will happen is that during the let's say during the day or the trading week uh, these symbols might fall out eventually and uh, new symbols will be added right and so whenever that happens then you'll get an alert so so that's one way to do it with watch lists um, but you can also 
uh, you can also save this as a scan query. And what that does, same thing here, so it'll be a double top query, okay? You save that and you come over here, okay? And you go to personal and there it is. And as you can see, the difference between the top watch list and the top query is that the query has this purple icon on it. And what that means is that this is an automatically updating um, scan. Okay, so it will automatically update with any new changes. You don't need to create an alert for it or anything. And it'll just automatically add, you know, in or out, whatever um, whatever fits the criteria of that uh, scan query that you just created. Okay, so having reviewed that, it's just something which actually belonged to the previous video, let's go ahead and move over to what we're going to be looking at today. And uh, it's basically, basically this Analyze tab. Let me get this out of the way basically this analyze tab here okay and and also a little bit of the trade tab okay because there's a few things that a lot of people miss um, so for example uh, this is when we're taking uh, mostly single calls although it obviously you know the concepts apply to spreads uh, spread strategies like verticals and whatnot but let's just go ahead and look at a monthly expiration the May uh, today is April 15. Uh, we're looking at about 30 days out, 34 days out. Okay, so you look at this, and let's go and do Amazon because that's what I had uh, worked this out on. Okay, so you have Amazon, right? It's trading at 102.51, and um, here are your call strikes, your calls, and here are your puts, right? And we all know uh, at the money, which is which is actually in the money, the 100. Uh, strike for May, uh, it's 6.95 to buy right now. Okay, and what I want to cover over or go over are the Greeks. And the fact of the matter is that not a lot of us traders use the Greeks and probabilities or statistics when we're looking at these uh, trades that we're putting on. So uh, I wanted to qu quickly review and and maybe you know uh, gloss over some of these less utilized, although very helpful, uh, parameters. So, okay, let's go over what this means. So we have the 100 strike, 30 days out, and this call, or this option contract, is going for 695, right? And if we glance over to the Greeks over here, the delta is 62. Now, what does that mean? It means a couple of things. Number one, it means that there is a 62, or this is the way uh, a lot of traders interpret this, there's a 62% probability of that option ending up in the money, okay? Now, something that you might not be completely clear, clear about is that that 62% is the probability of that option at that strike ending up or expiring in the money on that particular expiry date, which is May 19th. The thing is that that option might move up and down, uh, obviously is going to move up and down and oscillate quite a lot uh, from now until May 19th, 34 days from now. So what does that mean? It means that this 62%, although it might, lo might look great, uh, there will be a lot of ups and downs um, in between. And I, I'm sure that all of you in the Discord community have seen and taken uh, alerts from analysts and uh, the minute it starts going against us we jump out you know be it because we didn't re really analyze um, the uh, uh, the trade enough before we jumped into it we just took the alert blindly as it is always uh, discouraged um, and uh, but you know that's what we signed up for a lot of us so, you know we, we, we want to get expert you know, alerts, expert signals, and we don't want to do due diligence, right? Well, um, we get out of the trade for a loss, and then a couple of days later, it goes in the money, and way in the money. And that's why a lot of us traders end up with um, losses, you know, and, and you're like, how can it be? If we look through the Discord community end of the day uh, statistics, we're like, you know, this guy made you know, 60%, 100%, 200%. Um, and, and we 
turned out a loss. You know, and then you know we start complaining in the chat. In the chat, we're like, "Oh man, I can't believe I lost so much money." And then, you know, those analysts that put up those alerts and who did really well during the day, they come back and they're like, "Well, wait, what do you mean you came out?" But I mean, did you take my trade? And they're like, "Yeah, I took your trade. Like, boy, I got out for 100 percent. What did you do? Oh, I got out for like minus 50." Well, that's because they probably knew when to get out and that is what this delta is talking about this is referring to the probability of this specific option contract of hundred dollars may 19th being in the money on may 19th all right there's a lot of things that can happen from now until may 19th and it has to do with gamma and theta and vega uh, obviously and the underlying price now let me just show you something that you might not know about which is if you go up here to the gamma and you click on this and you come down here to uh, theoreticals and Greeks, look at this option here called probability of touching. Okay, let me go ahead and click on that. Now let's look at the gamma before we do that. What is the I'm trying to get that off? What is the gamma telling us on this 100? Okay, what it tells us is today, which is April 15th, assuming that this were a trading day. Okay, the delta is telling us that this 695 is going to be $62 greater for every dollar that the actual price, the current price goes up. So it's 102.51 on Monday. If this thing opens at 102.51 and it goes up to 103.51, okay? And that means that our option contract is going to go from 695 to 695 plus 62, right? So it's basically going to be worth, see here, 62 is 757. So 757 instead of 695. That's what that means. And what does it also mean is that it has a negative theta, of course, time decay, of eight dollars so that means that at the end of monday even if this thing is up at 103.51 our contract is going to be 757 but it's at the end of monday it's also going to be eight dollars less because of time decay so minus eight dollars so it's actually going to be worth 749 okay and i'm going to open up real quick if i can find it here um let's i believe in here i had a quick uh, spreadsheet um, that I wanted to kind of use to uh, draw up an example. Let's see here, there it is. Options gamma. All right. Okay, so here it is. You know, you have your stock price. Uh, you have. I was looking at a different one. I was looking at the 102. So that's 196. So that's this one here. Oh, okay, because it wasn't May 19th. Let's jump over here to April. Right, so here's the 102, right? We can use this as an example. So it's 59, 10, and 14, right? Delta, gamma, theta. So 59, right, 10, and 13. Okay, so what that means is that this option price right now, 196, which is right here, on the next day, if it goes up by $1, then it's going to go up 59 dollars, which is, or 59 cents, which is the delta. Now, the next day, it's not going to be 255 plus 59 because delta changes. So, once it, not because of the day, because of the new strike, because of the new price. Okay, so once it reaches 102, the delta stops being 59, which is what we have here. Okay, and once it reaches 103, the new delta is 69, not 59. So, how do we know that? Because that's what the gamma tells us. Gamma tells us how much the delta is going to change based on uh, whatever the strike price is. So now our delta is going to be 69. So for the next day, we're not going to use the 59 on top of the actual price. We're going to use the 69 on top of the 255, which was the new price. And it keeps going, right? It keeps going. All right, so for every dollar it goes up, it goes up because of the delta, but the delta also goes up. It goes up from 59 to 69 to 79 to 89, so on and so forth. All right, and then the theta is the one that works against us when we're talking about calls because it decays every day. All right, and 
um, as you can see here, this one is this one decays at 13. Okay, so this will go up 59 on the first day. By the end of the first day, it'll also decline by 13. Okay, so it won't be 255. It'll be 242. So you take the current value of your of your option. You add the delta for that strike, for that new strike, that new dollar move, and then you subtract the theta, right? Okay, so over here you have the options and theoreticals, something called the probability of touching. Now let's go ahead and add this in, and it replaces the gamma with this probability. What does this mean? Okay, this means that because the actual you know, chart or the actual movement. Let's say that we were here because it can go, it can go up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. It might reach the price, right? But it might come back down from that price, right? So if it comes back down from that price, it's no longer at that strike. So you're losing money, right? Now, the delta tells you what the probability of you reaching this price is on expiration date. Probability of touching, just as you might expect, is the probability probability of this uh, of this option contract actually touching or the the strike actually touching that price. Okay. So come back over here. Sorry. Okay. What this is telling us is that even though the probability of this contract ending above 103, which is the strike, right? On April 21st, which is uh, six days from now, it has a 93% probability of actually reaching 103 and then maybe pulling back from it, okay? So that is actually telling you it might reach that price. It might not stay above that price. That probability is a lot less. It's only 48. But there is a 94 almost percent chance of that uh, reaching that strike which is, as you probably imagine, a lot more useful, but then you have to be on top of it, right? Because it might reach it, but then it might come right back down. Okay, so that's one, thi one thing that uh, a lot of people don't usually know. All right, let me cover, let me leave it back on gamma, okay? The other thing that a lot of traders don't use is this market move over here. This is the market maker move, which is something specific to the uh, Thinkorswim uh, trading platform. And what this is telling us is that this has an expected move, expected move of either plus or minus three dollars and forty cents. So what this means is that from 10251 they are expecting a move of either up to 105 or low down to 99. All right, so that will give you an idea is if you're going too far out of the money because you're looking for that cheaper contract, well, if it's above 103, well, that would be, be 105, 100, pretty much 106. Anything above 106 should have a very low probability of actually ending up in the money, which is also reflected in the delta because, as you can see, normally you uh, want to take uh, deltas uh, 30 or above, significant significantly below 30 is something that is considered uh, you know a little bit or not a little bit but something that's considered statistically improbable so that is definitely above the market maker move all right so that is something that might also help you when you're reading through these uh, options chain and um, the other one is what we talked about is this probability analysis all right now what is this thing telling us? So this is really cool because you could actually track the probability of the different prices. You have prices up on the vertical axis and you have days to expiry or days from now, rather, um, on the horizontal axis. So what is this telling us? This is telling us that it's currently at 105.51, 102.51. And if you're going to be getting the, which one did we say? Let me go back here. We're talking about the 102, but that's obviously in the money. Um, let's talk about that 106, which was a, you know, way out. Let me see here. Okay, so what about 106? Okay, well, let's look for 106 on the vertical price chart, or price axis, and there's 106. 
what is the probability of this being uh, at or above 106 on April 21st? As you can see, as I, as I move horizontally, that probability is going to be 27 percent, all right, which is pretty close to uh, what the delta was telling us here, what this was going to be. Um, let's see, this is actually saying, there it is, okay, the 106 or so. Yeah, the 106 is 21 percent probability of being in the money. So if you go to 106, on, there it is, that's right on it, 106. Maybe, God, this is so sensitive. There it is. Okay, so 28% probability of that um, stock reaching 20, uh, 106 or above, and there, therefore it has a 71.1% probability of being at 106 or below. Okay, so uh, you can actually move around uh, around these, and it it should make sense to you. The further out you go, if you go over to here, you know, a few days later then seven days later actually then the probability of it being at or above 106 actually jumped from 28 i believe to 34 percent right because there's more time if you go further out on the six there it is it's even greater it just went up to 37 percent okay and the same thing works to the downside right so if you're working with puts then you can also get the probability of this being uh, at or below um, a certain price range as well and if you go down here to the table you can actually see those probabilities without you having to scroll around because you can see how sensitive this thing is um, without you having to scroll around all over the place you can actually get those probabilities here when what is the probability of this being you know uh, between 102 and 112 well it's 44 percent but that's actually pretty good um, and you can you know keep going further out uh, you can also control these ranges by using these price slices Okay, and the price slices are uh, very useful. You can set them up to be 10% uh, if you want to be 10%, and you can set these over here, I believe, right? So you can set uh, slices if you want them to be at 10% plus or minus 50% plus or minus. You want it to be one standard deviation, you know, plus or minus, and so that'll switch to one standard deviation above 102.7 and one standard deviation below 102.7, and then that automatically adjusts this. As you can see, anything above 109, which was your first target to the upside, and anything below 96.28, which is your target to the downside, and then you have the two ranges from uh, from your lower target to your current, and from your current to your higher target. All right, so. Um, this is a very useful uh, table and chart because it lets you see what the probabilities of these things are. Okay, and remember, these probabilities are all at expire. The only one that's uh, the probability of touching is the only one that will give you something that might happen before um, expiry. And there's the, the risk profile I believe we covered in a different video. I'm going to tag to here as well. And this has the same slices, and you can see graphically what's going to happen. Uh, between your uh, price slices and your break-even points on the red bars and you can see this gray area which is the probability range which is currently set for one standard deviation but you can also change that uh, and you can also change the date right so um, I hope you found this video informative and I will be trying to cover some more of the things that Thinkorswim has to offer. It's a very awesome platform. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be notified of all these events. And also, don't forget that if you use my link, which is also uh, linked here in the description, uh, my link to sign for sign up for a uh, X Trades uh, membership plan, I will personally give you a guided tour of the X Cord. Uh, sorry, the Discord x trades community um, and the mobile app as well if you want to and i'll even throw in uh, your platform of choice if i happen to know uh, about it enough that i can uh, help you out with it and um, so don't forget to sign up for the uh, x trades membership plan as well and use my link and i'll give you that free video guided tour all right happy trading and i will catch you guys next time